Do you work with AWS CloudFormation? And you're finding that as your application grows, you're getting close to the 500 resource limit? If that's the case, then this is the video for you. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. In this video, we'll be looking at how we can reduce the number of resources in our main AWS CloudFormation stack by using nested stacks and a nice little plugin which can help make this easier. Of course, the best way to resolve having too many resources in a single CloudFormation template is to actually create microservices where you split your code along functionality or along service lines and create separate repos for that. But if that isn't an option for you, then this video and this serverless plugin will help alleviate your problems. When you're building a project using serverless, you often find that over time, as you add more features and more endpoints and more lambdas, that your number of resources actually creeps up quite a lot. As you can see here, I've taken one of my existing projects, added a couple more endpoints and lambdas, and we're up to 334 resources. This is quite a lot, as this is all put into a single cloud formation template. Luckily for us, there is a recent update which changed the limit on resources on a cloud formation template from 200 all the way up to 500 resources, which gives us a lot more room to add things to our serverless projects without having to worry about the resource limit. Even though it has been increased, you can always end up creeping up those resources and get close to that 500 limit. When you get close to that point, you have a couple of options. You can either take the code and split it into microservices. This is the best option because you want to separate out that code so that you have less things inside each project which could conflict or cause issues down the line. If you have managed to separate your services into microservices and you're still finding that you're approaching that 500 resource limit in some of those projects, then you might have to do something a little bit different. That is going to involve splitting this individual stack keeping it all in a single repo. This can get really complicated, but luckily for us, there is a plugin which assists us by splitting it in a really smooth way. So with this project, we're gonna have a go at adding that plugin and seeing how we can change the number of resources in our main our CloudFormation template. As you can see, when we do a normal SLS deploy, we have 334 resources. If we want to reduce that number, we add this plugin. In my terminal, I'm gonna install a plugin. So the way to do this is in the terminal, enter SLS plugin install, and then we're gonna be using dash dash name of plugin serverless dash plugin dash split dash st stacks. And what this is going to do it is going to add the serverless plugin split stacks to our node modules, but also add it to our serverless YAML plugin list. So down here. We can see here that we have a plugin added to our list. 
this is automatically done with the surplus plugin install, which is a nice little command. Now that we've got that, we can provide some config to this plugin to help it decide on how to split up this stack. If we go into our custom section and add a new section called split stack, just like that. And there are a few different ways to configure this sp stack splitting. The first way is to split it per function. And if we set that to true and save this file, what this is going to do is it's going to create a new stack for each function in our serverless YAML file. What we can do to test this is to go into our terminal and run SLS package. What this is going to do is it's going to build this as if it was going to deploy it so we can see what resources and what stacks would be created. This takes a little bit of time, so I'll get back to you when that is done. So now that has finished packaging up, we can see that we have lots of different stacks and our route still has 334 resources in. The way this has worked hasn't reduced the number of resources in our root stack and in this case isn't the best use case. If you had fewer functions but with lots of endpoints per function then this method could be slightly more effective but in general isn't always the best solution for reducing the total number of resources in your main stack. So our next option is inside our config, change the per function to false. And this time we're going to be using per type. Set that to true. We can now go back into our terminal and run SLS package one more time. And when this is done, we'll be able to see how this set of configuration would be packaged up. So now we've completed that, we can see that we have 294 resources in our root stack and two stacks. That is actually a significant saving of around 40 resources in our root stack. And our second stack has 41 resources in that stack. That is pretty good as we've reduced our main stacks. This is good, but we have a third type of stacking config. So change our per type to false and in here we can go with per group function and set that to true. Make sure that that is a capital G in there. And when we use this method of splitting the stacks, we need to set the number of nested stacks. And we do that by setting the nested stack count. So this nested stack count is the total number of nested stacks in our system. And what's going to happen with this it is going to take each of those per function results and group them so that they end up in a total number of stacks, as we've noted down here. If we go with five and save this, we can go into our terminal and run SLS package one more time and see what this ends up producing in terms of our stacks. So now we can see that this has finished compiling and we can see that we have our five nested stacks 
and inside each of these stacks is going to be a group of multiple functions. That's why they vary slightly in size, but the number of functions inside there will add up to the total number of functions. As you can see, this has reduced our root stack size, which is the main aim of this. And as you increase the number of functions and endpoints in this system, it won't actually add anything to the root. It'll be added into each of these nested stacks, which means this root will only contain other resources such as Dynamo tables or S3 buckets. So those are the three options for configuring your split stacks. You need to weigh up which of the three are most effective for you based on the kind of resources you have inside your serverless project. If you've got a lot of functions and not much else, then maybe this group functions is the most effective way of using this service. If you've got a lot of other resources such as Dynamo tables and a lot of S3 buckets, then maybe the, the per type would be the best configuration. The good thing is you can do exactly what I've done in this video. You can try each of these out and with the group functions, you can change the number of nested stack count and see how that also affects how large each of the stacks is. Of course, as I said earlier, this should only be used if you've already split your service into microservices, as doing this is the best practices for keeping your resources isolated, as well as the logic. If you've learned something new in this video, it would really help me out if you smash that like button, as it helps the YouTube algorithm suggest this video to more developers just like yourselves. And if you haven't done already, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you get notified next time I release a serverless video. Thank you and I'll see you in that video.